people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. with this, some comments Jaron Ennis made in reference to three-division champion Terrence Crawford. He believes he's a better all-around fighter than Terrence. He made these comments ahead of this past weekend's fight with Karen Chukotsian. At least in the eyes of a few, those comments have aged like so many avocados on so many breakfast bars. He didn't look like all that dynamic a fighter opposite the ring, Karen Chukotsian, who with a few pivots was able to greatly offset Jaron Boots Ennis's power. Don't start up with how great Chukotsian is because Jaron Boots Ennis was unable to knock him out. Karen Chukatsian was about as unheralded a welterweight as unheralded welterweights go. He has no quality scalps in this division. If that was intended to be some sort of an acid test, what it revealed is that Jaron Boots Ennis struggles with movers who can pivot. And you know who's got some quality pivots? I'll tell you who. Terrence Crawford, who doesn't just pivot, he hooks on the turn. He doesn't go in there fighting half a fight like a Karen Chukatsian. Jaron Boots Ennis was seen shooting single jabs with the intention of bringing over the backhand, and because Chukatsian was as mobile and nimble as he was, Elusive. Boots struggled to get off the power shots. Looked less like a pair of boots and more like a pair of Crocs. He won the fight. He won the fight on activity. He won the fight on aggression, though, as stated, it wasn't the best advertisement for everything Boots can do. And when you see guys rushing to Jaron Boots Ennis's defense, that Karen Chukatsian took him the distance, ask yourself a question. If it were Virgil Ortiz that went 12 rounds with Chukatsian, if it were Terrence Crawford that went 12 rounds with Chukatsian, do you think that these same guys would rush? To their defense? You already know the answer. Jaron Boots and has stated, I'm more smoother and slicker. My shots are a little tighter than his, but he's a great fighter. I just feel like I'm better all around. He said this in reference to Terrence Crawford, and yet there were moments in yesterday's fight where he was winging big shots, very big shots, so big, he actually spun all the way around. At least two times. I'm not trying to convince any of you out there that Jaron Boots Ennis is a bad fighter. I'm just saying those eggs need more bacon. That's what I've been saying. It couldn't have helped Jaron Boots Ennis last night that he only fought for roughly four minutes ahead of the Chukatsian. Four minutes. A grand total of four minutes all last year. You see this and you don't question how he's being managed, how his career is being handled. An unbeaten up-and-comer, you hope, you aspire to make a star one day. You have him fight for four minutes. The whole of last year, let's hope this year. Let's hope he's more active. He's often compared to yet another unbeaten up-and-comer like himself in today's welterweight division. Another bright young star that goes by the name Virgil Ortiz. And Virgil, like Jaron, in his last fight, he was opposite the ring. A moving target, except moving target he was sharing the ring with was an unbeaten guy, crafty one, and a southpaw. They both fought moving targets, guys that fight on the balls of their feet, guys that are fleet of foot in their last outings, and Virgil, unlike Jaron, he was able to stay in character. Jaron Ennis wasn't. It's not the end of the world that Karen Chukatsian took him the distance, though it's noteworthy. It's worth highlighting that he did. Because Jaron Ennis himself is telling you that he's a more dynamic fighter than three-division champion, current reigning WBO welterweight champion, Terrence Crawford. But what would people say if Terrence Crawford went 12 rounds with a Chukatsian? They'd never let him live it down. Even if he did pitch a shutout. Thankfully, Terrence Crawford just so happens to be one of those fighters that stays in character irrespective of the man opposite the ring and the differences in that fighter's base style fight by fight. He's knocked out every single welterweight he's shared the ring with. He knocked out an unbeaten Jose Benavidez where all Danny Garcia could do with that same Jose Benavidez years later was go to a decision. It's strange how people's minds work, how readily they crown 
Somebody like a Jaron Boots Ennis is the heir apparent to the welterweight throne with little substance to substantiate that claim. His resume is not better than Virgil's, and I'm not going to pretend it is. I'm not going to pretend that doesn't matter. It does. And he didn't look good yesterday. He didn't look all that dynamic to me. I'm not going to pretend that he did. He didn't. Those rushing to apologize for Boots' flat performance yesterday have some misguided sense of loyalty with the Showtime platform. Some fealty they pledge to it and their fighters and the consideration they give them that they do don't give any other fighter on any other platform. There is a tribal element and an eight one for those who are susceptible to suggestion because Showtime suggests to them that this guy's the next big thing. This guy's the heir apparent to the welterweight throne. They eat it up. ESPN tried to do the same thing with Edgar Berlanga, but I reserved my right to be skeptical. Showtime's doing the exact same thing with their own unbeaten up-and-comer, Jaron Boots Ennis, who I will admit I think has a higher ceiling than an Edgar Berlanga, though I'm not fully convinced. Looks like he's going to be sharing the ring with Roman Villa in his next fight. Roman Villa, who upset the apple cart for then unbeaten Rashidi Ellis on the undercard of that same show. If he does end up opposite the ring Roman Villa in his very next fight. I don't think he'll struggle with Roman the way he did with Karen Chukatsian because Roman Villa is a pressure fighter. He essentially does the opposite of what Chukatsian does. Where a Karen Chukatsian is moving away or around the action, a Roman Villa is moving towards it, barreling forward, giving a, a fighter like a Jaron Boots Ennis that many more opportunities to get off those big punches, those power shots. Not the kind of guy you have to go in there and find. Not the kind of guy you have to go in there and pin down. There's nothing subtle about Roman Villa. And perhaps Jaron Boots Ennis may have the success with Roman Villa that he didn't necessarily have with Chukatsi, and stylistically he should, but we'll see. Strange how much Jaron Boots Ennis likes to bring up Terrence Crawford when the belt that he's targeting is Errol Spence Jr.'s belt and not Terrence's. What's that about? Just in keeping with the fallout from this past weekend's action, Ryan Garcia stated, Goodbye, Tank. It's over for you. No more talking. Let's get it on. April 15th. The proposed date for their showdown, if they ever do showdown. There's still a sizable portion of the boxing community that approaches the prospect of these two fighting as soon as April with some skepticism. On the premise that they do, what are Ryan Garcia's chances based on what we saw yesterday? What did we learn? Well, first and foremost, we have to establish that neither Hector Garcia or Ryan Garcia are thought of as being from the same ilk as a Shakur Stevenson, as a Devin Haney. They're not. These are viewed as more vulnerable fighters that are easier to beat. Ahead of this past weekend's fight, I stated I didn't think Hector Garcia had the minerals, the right tools, and the right skills to upset the apple cart for Javante. I picked Javante by way of knockout. Irrespective of conspiracy theories and what moments of success the judges chose not to consider when scoring this fight for Hector, we must understand that neither Hector or Ryan, for that matter, they're not as defensively responsible as Shakur or Devin. And they're not as dynamic as Vasil Lomachenko. Nope. His varying skill set. They're not. What we did see from Hector Garcia that lends credence to the notion that Ryan may stand a chance against Gervonta is how Hector managed the distance early on by shooting the jab, employing it whilst not stepping into it, not bringing himself closer to Gervonta within striking distance of his counter punches, of his counter shots. While Hector was using his height, his length, and his jab, he was able to effectively manage the distance up until Gervonta started barreling forward. An important moment in that fight. It was important because it became evident that Gervonta Davis was struggling to win the battle of the jabs. He just didn't have the reach to tag Hector Garcia from the outside. Thus, he had to try to find his way mid-range to inside. Slip the jab, crowd the pocket, and force this guy to trade. Force him to fight. The relevance of that to a potential Ryan Garcia fight is that while Ryan Garcia may be a lot taller and a lot longer than Gervonta Davis, and he does have speed of his own, a quality left hook that he's likely going to look to land on Gervonta Davis, you have to question what happens if Gervonta slips. If he slips the jab, gets under or around it, will Ryan Garcia be able to manage the distance? Ryan's got some good qualities. He's got some things working for him. But I don't like his feet. They look a little clumsy. Something semblant of a baby gazelle. After about four or five rounds this past weekend, fight, you saw Gervonta Davis make a conscious effort to charge Hector Garcia because he was struggling to get around the jab. They were fencing for a little bit. 
from where I was sitting, Hector Garcia was getting the better end of that contest. So Javante Davis decided to employ a bit of head movement, change levels. Crowd him. If he does the exact same thing to Ryan Garcia, will Ryan be able to keep his footing and maintain the distance? Give himself, will he sell out and get sucked into an exchange where he might get hurt? Or will he maintain that distance by taking a half step back? You have to ask these questions about Ryan Garcia as opposed to a Shakur Stevenson, as opposed to a Devin Haney, because he's not as defensively responsible as they are. And he doesn't have the same base style either. They're champions. He's not. Champions that have been in there with champions. Ryan Garcia is little more than just a contender. Not a particularly active one either. The fighter can develop temperance and poise, patience over time to stick to a game plan. Stick to it. Don't panic, don't play the other guy's game. A seasoned fighter, an experienced fighter, may develop these characteristics, but that's not what Ryan is. He's a TikToker. Ryan may be figures that between his height, his length, and his speed, he can keep Gervonta Davis at bay with the lead hand and the speed on it. Because it's a fast jab and he's got fast hands, he figures that his punches will be harder to counter. And that might be true for the first couple of rounds. It might, though. He's going to need a plan A, a plan B, and maybe even a plan C. Plan A might be to keep Gervonta Davis at arm's length where he's too far out to get off his own punches, his own shots. Keep that jab working. Keep that jab handy. Keep it on him and stick him. If he tries to move an inch forward, you move an inch back to maintain that distance. That might be plan A, but what about plan B? What if he gets around that jab? What if he's getting close to you? What then? How do you respond? What do you do? Ryan has the advantage on the outside, but mid-range to inside, Javante Davis. The shorter, stumpier fighter with the shorter arms and the lower center of gravity He'll have the advantage within close quarters. Mid-range to inside, Ryan Garcia's length and his speed, it won't matter. And if Gervonta Davis gets inside, how will Ryan Garcia respond? What's he going to do as that's where he is most vulnerable? There's still a lot of skepticism as to whether or not this fight is even going to happen. Well, if we're operating on the assumption that it's going to, these are the relevant questions for Ryan Garcia what his keys to success are. Using his height, using his length, using his jab, and maintaining distance, beating those feet. Don't sell out and don't give in. Don't trade with this kid. For Javante Davis, it's a different dichotomy. He's got to make sure to slip the jab, get under and or around it. He's got to apply pressure, educated pressure. Force Ryan to trade. Force Ryan to fight. Change levels if you have to. You're the shorter, stumpier fighter with the lower center of gravity. You get low enough that he has to give up some of his height just to touch you. So when he does, you can bring over a looping shot. Hell to pay if this fight doesn't happen. If for whatever reason these two don't meet up in April after dangling this carrot in front of the fight fans, it will be hard to forgive either one of them. If this thing don't go down... If this thing don't go down... Ryan Garcia may soon find himself under close scrutiny and pressure to face someone else. Another hard punch and southpaw that campaigns at a higher weight than Gervonta Davis, a more maturated fighter, a reigning champion, not a secondary belt holder like Gervonta. I'm talking about Regis Prograrius. Regis Prograrius, who Ryan Garcia told, no, Regis, you aren't as good as you think. You've got the mentality, kid, so that's a plus. Get a load of him. Did he just call Regis Prograrius a kid? A child. It's in keeping with the theme of this generation's youth to say things they can't stand on, say things they don't really mean, things that aren't even true. Goes back to the old saying that you're just talking because you've got a mouth and you're only running it because you're not close enough to Regis for him to close it. Ryan is only at liberty to mouth off to Regis Progre because he knows there's not much chance he'll share the ring with him, though. Regis Progre responded by saying, yeah, okay, well, I'll know along with the rest of the world that mentally, you're weak. I'll break your spirit. Ryan's a guy who paints his nails, does TikTok dances, and irrespective of his recreational activities, his actual in-the-ring exploits, he's nowhere near as maturated a fighter, experienced a fighter, as a Regis Progre. This is a guy who came very close to being stopped by a non-puncher in Luke Campbell. He thinks he can mouth off the Regis Progre, and he's only mouthing off because he knows he's not gonna fight him, saying, you keep believing that. You're a champion, and nobody knows who you are. Plus, you step into the ring fat. Shut your ass up. Nobody needs to know who he is for him to fuck you up. How many of your Instagram followers knew who Luke Campbell was when he sat you on your ass? How many, King Rye? Rick? Miracle! Miracle! Who handles the career of 
Jose Ramirez, Virgil Ortiz, several others. He chimed in on the festivity saying, you have been improving, Ryan, stepping up, and now I think you're ready for bigger fights. And I would give you a slight edge with Tank. However, Progre, Ramirez, those bouts are not close to ready yet. I do think you beat Teofimo or would favor you. He doesn't think those bouts are ready yet. That's just another way of saying you don't think he can beat those guys. It's not a souffle, you know. You can stick him in there right now and find out who beats who, but you know what you're saying. You know what you mean, and so does Ryan Garcia. Which is why I keep telling you, Ryan better hope. He better hope that that Gervonta Davis fight happens in April, because if it doesn't, you know Reach is pro -gray. You know he's not with anybody. Any particular platform that might hamper his movement, his mobility, his autonomy as a fighter, he's not with top rank, he's not with the PBC. He's not with the zone, though there's nothing stopping him from going over there and fighting you. And while I don't think... Ryan doesn't really want it. Ryan's not pushing for a fight like this. Why do you think he keeps talking about Regis's notoriety? It's not what I'm getting at. It's the scrutiny. It's the pressure that Ryan Garcia may find himself under if he doesn't fight Javante Davis in April. Because if he's not fighting him in April, what's stopping him from fighting Regis? That's the question people are going to ask. Ryan would do well to not mistake his popularity with his prowess as a pugilist. Just because you're more popular than Regis doesn't mean you're a better fighter than Regis. Teofimo Lopez was a lot more popular than George Cambosos, but that didn't stop George from being... Him. What the hell does the number of Instagram followers you've got have to do with your ability to fight? And what the hell does people knowing or not knowing Regis Progre have to do with his? Absolutely nothing, and Ryan knows that. Underneath it all, he's hiding behind his marquee value. You could give Ryan Garcia better odds opposite the ring of Gervonta Davis than a Regis Progre because Regis is a naturally bigger guy than Gervonta Davis with a bigger punch, I'd wager, and he's a more maturated fighter. He is. Certainly more maturated than Ryan Garcia by far and wide. If Ryan Garcia is dumb enough to share the ring with Regis Progre at any point in the next 12 months of this calendar year. He loses that fight, and he loses bad. I'm talking hospital. Unless those millions of Instagram followers are going to fight the fight with him, fight the fight for him, Ryan Garcia don't stand a chance against Regis Progre anywhere inside of two to three fights. Not a chance in hell. Which makes Ryan Garcia mouthing off to this guy that much more cringe-worthy. You often hear it said in boxing that the fighter has to believe in himself even when no one else does. And that might be true. That might be true for Ryan. Though, irrespective of betting on himself, if that's what he's even really doing, irrespective of that, I wouldn't bank on him. I wouldn't bet on him. Not against Regis. You crazy? You better leave that guy alone and focus on the shrimp down there at 135 pounds because you've got a way better chance against him than you do against Regis. And if you keep carrying on like this and something happens to that Davis fight to where it don't happen, this is who people are going to expect you to fight. They're going to expect you to fight Regis Progre based on the whites that come out of your mouth. Is that what you want? Is it really?